So we are going to move to uh, the other presentation of the next uh, topic on uh, bees, uh, meaning, of course, the vote we are going to have in a couple of minutes now. Uh, so we start with a short presentation of the resolution of the objection, starting with Bas Eikuts and then Eric Andrieux, Martin Oshik, and Aza Hazenkamp for one minute and a half each, please. Thank you very much. Um, to be very honest, this one should be quite straightforward. Um, in 2009, so 2009, that's 10 years ago, there was a big battle around the pesticide regulation, and then we managed to get a lot of things in, but also that they should be taken into consideration, the chronic toxicity. Chronic toxicity, not only acute toxicity, but also chronic toxicity. That was in the regulation adopted, and that was a very important decision that was endorsed by the Parliament. EFSA then started to work on that, and four years later they had their guidance document, the B guidance document, already in 2013. But that was not a formally adopted one yet, but that was already being used and applied, and that, for example, led to the prohibition of the three neonicotinoids that we have also just discussed. So the only thing that had to happen is put that into law. And that was also the plan of the European Commission. It was on the table, but then, unfortunately, uh, some member states backed down, got nervous, got lobbied, I would say, very frankly. And unfortunately, also the Commission backed down. And in the end, they said, we needed consensus. But that's not true. You don't need consensus. You need a majority. And if at the technical working group you don't get it through, you have to bring it to the political level to make sure that it's the ministers clearly taking their responsibility by ensuring that when we are translating now the proposals into law, that we're not only taking acute toxicity, but more importantly, the chronic toxicity into account, that is now being postponed, and therefore it's in violation with the pesticide regulation adopted in 2009, and we cannot do anything else than object to this. Thank you. For SND, Eric Andrieux. If Eric is here, apparently not, so uh, let's move to Renew and then back to SND if you have another speaker. So Martin Oshik for Renew. Thank you very much. And I have to exceptionally agree. Uh, <laughs> The, especially after the pollinators initiative discussion, I think this should be pretty straightforward. But uh, let me put a few points uh, on top of it. Uh, one thing is, for me, this has been quite an interesting discussion with a number of colleagues and, and people outside of this chamber, because should we not approve at least some step forward? Should not we take at least something positive, even if not everything? Uh, and I would say no. There are a few reasons for that. One is uh, it would actually then would be closing our eyes to breaking of the law because that's what we agreed, that this House agreed with the Commission and, and the Council in the pesticides regulation. Um, and second, it wouldn't be really even a much step forward because the industry themselves are saying that uh, the B guidelines as in the gutted form are no really change to the common practice. So I think we really need to bring out this issue in the open and we need to ensure that the member states face the public and tell, no, we don't really care about the bees. And I would like to see them. So I hope uh, we can support this measure. Thank you. To the GUE, Anna Hazekamp. Thank you, Voorzitter. Yeah. Thank you very much. Under pressure from certain member states, the uh, rules and regulations affecting uh, bees are far too weak. Uh, for example, the long-term effects of uh, dangerous uh, pesticides on bees, that's not something which uh, has been factored into the equation. And what the bees need, what the bees need is uh, good, effective protection. And I think that... Um, I would ask the full committee to uh, vote in favour of this objection. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to SND if you have a formal speaker. No. Okay. 
Um, so to the Commission, DG Santé, Klaus Behren for two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And um, I'm afraid that, uh, of course, we cannot agree with the uh, comments made that the proposal from the Commission would be in violation of the regulation. Uh, we believe it fully is uh, in line with the provisions laid down in the pesticides regulation. If adopted, the regulation would allow us to implement a part of the EFSA B guidance from 2013 that several speakers have asked to be implemented, in particular the parts related to acute uh, toxicity. And unlike uh, what um, the study that Mr. Hoysek uh, referred to in uh, his uh, statement that is also referenced in point V of the resolution, there is an improvement for the assessment of acute risks, in particular to other exposure routes via dust exposure, uh, which is particularly relevant for seed treatment. And this was, in fact, one of the crucial points also that led to the restriction and then uh, later the further restriction of the neonicotinoids. In addition, we will look at the exposure via water, uh, which is at the moment also uh, not the case. So there is a clear improvement uh, for the assessment of the risks uh, of acute nature to the honeybees. Yes, it is correct that um, we have not proposed uh, the uh, inclusion of all the elements related to the chronic exposure because the member states were not ready to support it. They did not believe that this was indeed the latest uh, state of science, and that is why we have given a mandate to EFSA to review those parts of the guidance document, and that should be completed in March uh, 2021. Um, and then, of course, the Commission will vigorously pursue the implementation of all the parts of the guidance related to chronic risks, to humble, uh, bumblebees, and also to solitary bees. But before that, um, as I said, the Member States were not ready to support it. So ultimately, if the resolution is adopted, we will not be able to implement uh, those parts of the bee guidance that would improve the assessment for the acute risks to honeybees. Thank you. Thank you. So I missed a, a request from the floor from the EPP. Uh, from, from okay, so that's your request. Good. So I see important <coughs> see important arguments of objectors. Commission does not take into account current technical and scientific knowledge by limiting studies of the impact on the bees and solely honeybees. Remaining silent of chronic toxicity to honeybees and the toxicity studies to bumblebees and solitary bees also are avoided. So I hear the arguments of Commission. Yes, majority of member states consistently objected to endorse the parts of bee guidance related to other species and to chronic risk evaluations and arguing chronic toxicity solely for honeybees would at least be as the forward in protecting bees. Anyway, I, I personally agree with the motion opposing adoption of the draft commission regulation calling to submit a new one based on the latest scientific and technical knowledge expanding toxicity studies towards chronic toxicity and not limiting species by solely honeybees. Okay, I'm just going to uh, open the floor for the groups uh, not having had the chance to uh, talk before. Otherwise, we have no choice, uh, no, no, no chance to respect the time constraints we have. So there is another request from ECR. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. So we do agree with the assertion that the Commission does not base this draft regulation on the latest scientific knowledge and evidence. EFSA B document has been published in 2013, and since there have been a significant increase in number of new studies. So uh, we are surprised that the Commission has come forward with this implementation, given the long standing criticism in the Council that many parts of the guidance are not applicable or not suitable for regulatory purposes. Uh, with that said, on the other hand, uh, I do not occur with the objections further arguments regarding the exclusion of the chronic and larva testing and criteria for bumblebees and solitary bees. Uh, the member states and EFSA already analyzed chronic and larval data. 
There has been a mandatory reporting since 2013. Uh, moreover, contrary to views of the objectors, the inclusion of criteria in the original guidance for bubble bees and solidary bees was premature and poorly conceived. How can we prove the absence of the risk if the, best, if the test methods are not yet available? It's essential that we act on the factors that threaten bee health, but this action must be based on the sound science and a regulatory certainty. I believe that there is a compelling argument for the draft regulation to be re-evaluated and refined before it comes into effect. Therefore, our group will abstain. Thank you. Any other requests? Okay. So, um, the vote will be in a couple of minutes, and uh, if there is a majority for the objection, then we will vote on Wednesday, Wednesday in plenary. So, we move to the other objection. Uh,